Welcome back to Student of the Gun Homeroom. I am your favorite host, Paul Markle. And yes, we did take a little break for the holidays. I think just about everybody took a break. But our break is over and it's time to get back to business and it's try time to get serious. And today we're going to talk about dealing with the anti-gun, gun banning crowd. Now, I don't mean the, the far fringe lunatic people um, in Washington, D.C. and in California and so forth. I'm talking about the people that you run into at the grocery store, uh, at your church, uh, your kid's school, what have you. Those people that normally seem like rational human beings until the subject of firearms comes up. And then they, they go all, we need to ban all guns and no one needs those and so forth. Okay. Here's what I want you to do, gun people. I don't want you to argue with them. I don't want you to tell them about the Second Amendment because they're really beyond that. They're beyond reason, probably. And this is how you find out whether or not you're dealing with a semi-reasonable person or someone who's governed purely by emotions. Okay. Someone, you run into somebody at your kid's school or what have you, and they say, oh, you know, that recent thing, all these things that are going on in America, all these shootings, it's just time. It's time to ban guns, it's especially those those bad guns, the, the assault weapons. And stuff. We, we have to ban those. And you say, you know what? I think you're absolutely right. I think it is time for a change. And they're like, well, I thought I thought Paul was a gun guy, but apparently I've converted him. Yeah, Paul, you're, you're right. And you say, you know, but legislation takes a long time. It takes a long time to get a bill passed through the Senate and the House and get the president to sign it. I mean, it could be months, you know, before we actually have any real solid change. And they're like, mm, well, you know, yeah, but we have to do it. We have to start now. Okay, cool. Tell them this. Say, well, you know what? We could start immediately. We could start tomorrow. We could ban those guns tomorrow legally, and we could do it through just internal memorandums and orders. Well, what do you mean? Well, right now in the United States, there are government agencies, sheriff's departments, police departments, state, federal, and municipal agencies that all have in their lockers big, evil, mean, nasty black rifles. And all it would take would be a letter from the chief, the sheriff, the chief administrator, the deputy director, whoever it is, telling them to take all those guns out and have them destroyed and they could do it in one week and that would be a lot quicker than doing all of the legislation and voting and signatures and so forth that is a an effective change that we can make right now and if they're like most they might ponder for a second and then they'll say well no i, I don't think that the police and the government need to get rid of those guns and you say oh well, I thought you were against assault weapons. Well, I am. Yeah, but those exact same guns are in the hands of the police and government agencies right now. Those exact guns. The same ones that, that citizens owns. Well, it's okay if the police have them. And, and, the, and the government, it's okay if the government has them. We say, well, do you really want to ban all guns? Or do you just want to take them out of the hands of certain people? Well, well and here we go. That's when you break their OODA loop. Then that's when the, the, the wheels will come off the tracks. And this is when you find out whether or not they're truly rational, rational and reasonable, or at the very least intellectually honest with themselves, or whether they just want to impose civilian disarmament. And that really, ladies and gentlemen, is the key. It's not okay, can we eliminate these machines, all these black rifle machines? And that's all they are. They're machines, okay? They have moving parts, springs, and levers, and so forth, and they go boom, boom, boom. But they're just simple machines. Okay, do we want to eliminate all of those from the face of the planet and institute a new utopia? Or do we simply want, simply want to take those guns out of the hands of a certain type of people and make sure that they're in the hands of another certain type of people? Okay, and if that's the case... Ladies and gentlemen of the world, we have been playing this game for centuries. And I don't mean two centuries or three centuries. I'm talking all the way back to the, basically, the beginning of recorded time, to the beginning of the Roman calendar. There has always been on planet Earth the purpose or design of the government or whoever is ruling and is in charge at that time to take arms out of the hands of the less desirable, the peasants, the non-ruling class. 
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this right here has been banned by more governments and more countries than guns ever been, have been. That's because the sword is the tool of the government, of the army, not of the peasant. And the peasant is not allowed to have it. It's occurred in Japan. The Romans were one of the first uh, organizations or groups to disarm the Jews. They had... they pass a law forbidding Jews to own swords. Because why? Because they don't like what the Jews were laying down. They're like, we need to control these people. They can't have swords. Okay, and then of course, years later, uh, Adolf Hitler came along and said, hey, all you Jews, you don't need to have guns. Turn them in. How did that work out for them? Uh, in Japan, in the 1500s, the leader at the time, uh, it's like, I believe it was Toyotami Hideyoshi, Forgive me, Japanese friends, if I pronounce that wrong. Institute, what did they call the sword hunt, where they went around and they removed all weapons of war, swords, guns, long knives, spears, bows, from the peasantry. Because the peasantry was not allowed to possess arms. Okay, It occurred in Scotland when the British came in in 1715 and told all the Scottish people that they had to turn in their broadswords and it was a punishable, an offense punishable by death to possess a broadsword, a spear, a pike, a halberd, any weapon of war. Because why? Because the Brits didn't want those nasty Scots revolting against them or not paying their taxes the way they should. So when it comes to dealing with the civilian disarmament question, and don't accept gun control as a legitimate term. Don't do it. Don't even buy into it. Say, do we disarm all citizens or civilians or do we not? That, my friends, is the question. Right now, all this cosmetics about whether or not it's black or has a pistol grip, that's a bunch of smoke and mirrors. It's all about whether or not the citizens should be allowed to possess arms. So, in closing, when you encounter these rational people that say, well, we just need to ban those, say, you know what, you're absolutely right, and I will follow the lead of my leaders, of my government, and as soon as they take all their evil black nasty rifles and semi-automatic pistols and so forth out of the hands of government officials, then I will follow along very willingly. But until that time, you can go pound sand. So, it's me, Paul Markle, your favorite professor, saying, don't argue with them. You'll know just by asking them one single question whether or not they're reasonable or whether or not they are cuckoo. And, for all things Student of the Gun, where are you going to go? You're going to go to studentofthegun.com.